Epic collapse. Historic collapse. Not just tonight, the final seven games of this season. One win, six losses for the Philadelphia Eagles since starting 10-1. and one. Ruben Frank can enlighten us, but it says right here there's never been a bigger collapse, a worse season in Eagles history when you look at where they were when they started this season, coming off a Super Bowl appearance, coming within three points of winning the Super Bowl. And we're looking to blame at a time like this. Look at right there, number 52. Never met an offensive player he couldn't wave his hands at. And the same with James Bradbury. And the same with many of these Eagles players. And I'm not blaming just the players because you start with the players and you know what they say flows downhill. We can trace it uphill, though, to the coaching staff. We can trace it to the play calling. Dallas Goddard, not his finest hour, said they were going to flip a switch and everything was going to be fine. They were 0-0 in the postseason. There's Howie Roseman congratulating everybody, giving out a guys as the Eagles are walking off the field. What is he going to do? There's James Bradbury, number 24. At that, that's just a brutal night. It's a brutal season for James Bradbury, and it started with the last game of last season when he got that P.I. penalty, which at the time looked like it was a bad call. I'm not so sure at this point. And as you watch them walk off the field, how many of these guys are going to be different this time next year? Fletcher Cox, one of the longest tenured players on this Philadelphia Eagles team, number 91. Gave his all. His best, gave it his all. Brandon Graham's going to uh, – there's Kevin Byard. I mean, again, roughed up tonight. Uh, here's Here comes the young guys now. He's got to learn. Jordan Davis right got there. Got a lot there's to the learn. future right there. they got to grow up really fast. Mm -hmm. Him too. He might be uh, taking Kelsey's position. But when uh, you Cam Jurgens, yep, got it, got to be ready. When you when you trace it though, and there's DeAndre Swift. Do they keep him? DeAndre Swift. He's well, a one-year deal. Why keep him if you're not going to use him? You know right. what I mean? Yep. You're not going to use him and you know, take him out of the garage for a spin. Then what the heck? I, you know, wouldn't seem pointless. And and when we watch these guys, I don't know, I don't know what the point is with Howie here. Stan, congratulations. Well, I, 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 I think, you know, I think that's a, a strong leadership. He, yeah. he knows it's been a, you know, a disappointment. This guy. At least trying to keep the team together by showing, hey, guys, I'm not bailing out on you. I'm, the, I'm with you. Devontae, you know, Devontae, Devontae Smith, Smith the only guy that did his job today. Unbelievable. Yeah. He was Devontae incredible. Devontae Smith didn't have a touchdown. He just had about 120 yards receiving. Well, 148 franchise 100, postseason record. Played his butt off. Yeah, he, he did. Was, he was sensational. And that's oh, it. Wait, that's it. He's got, got a lot to learn also. Uh, and by the way, before we took to the air, and these are live pictures, uh, before we took to the air, we just missed Jalen Hurts going into the locker room. Here's Jason Kelsey. You saw the tears in his eyes on the bench as he's contemplating, we're sure, his future. You saw the hug he gave to Jeff Stoutland as time was expiring, perhaps telling him, hey, thanks for everything. This is it. He's Jeff. emotional right yeah, now. He's emotional. Don't retire. You played great this year, my man. You played great. Give us another year. Play, he played great for 13 seasons. He played, yeah. He's um, absolutely the greatest Eagles center ever. Hassan Reddick. Jim Ringo was pretty good. Yeah, Jim Ringo wasn't bad. Chuck Bednarik, not bad, you know. And as, as emotional he is, I mean, Kelsey has said he's not going to decide till he says when, when he's going to give it some time. Now, maybe he has decided, but from everything he's told me, he's he doesn't want to make a rash decision. He wants to kind of calm down, take a couple weeks at least from the season and, There's another and make guy that decision. But man, uh, certainly, certainly seems emotional tonight. Brandon Graham, stoic, as he comes off the field. He has been a champion with this team, and he was drafted in 2010 by the Philadelphia Eagles out of Michigan. And here we are in 2024. Big hug for Dom DeSandro. And you recall Dom, the chief of security. He was banished from the sideline in the regular season games. He was back today, first game back. And unfortunately, it was, it was not a good one to be back as the Eagles take it on the chin to Tampa Bay, 32 to 9 to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I think we all thought, uh, hoping against hope, that they were going to find a way to win this game. Because as the players have been say, saying, 0 
and O to start the postseason, and now O and one, one and done, and they are home. As we welcome you to Eagles Post Game Live, presented by our friends at Cure Auto Insurance, Barrett Brooks, Ron Jaworski, Ruben Frank, and we'll hear the interviews down in Tampa. I don't know what we're expecting to hear, but I started to say we want to place blame at a time like this, and, and a lot of times it, it would seem to be unfair to talk about, well, you know, they all tried to, etc. Blame is what's needed here because something's wrong if you lose <laughs> six out of your last seven games, including the final one, to go home for the winner. Something is wrong. And I said it all starts to go uphill. And you can start with Jalen Hurts and the offensive line. Three of five are pro bowlers. Jason Kelsey is an all pro again. That's all well and good, but it goes up to the coordinators. And it go there, this is Jalen Hurts coming off the field. First got number one on your jersey and number one off the field. There he goes. And he was, I, I don't care what the passer rating said. He played a horrible game tonight. He did not play a game like an MVP caliber quarterback should play. He did not play a game that we expected him to play. You get a... Calm, calm, calm down. I understand what he... He was, he was see, terrible. I understand that, but we need... We, we, yes. Was we want terrible. We want to blame, but at this point, let, let's let's talk about the inefficiencies first. Let's talk okay. about the lack of, of tackling. Jalen Hurts. No. No, we'll, we'll start with that. We, let's, <laughs> lack of tackling, uh, lack of motivation going into the game. They got a little Same. bit halfway through the game, but you know, you just saw teams that want it and teams that don't want it. The Eagles did not deserve to be in the playoffs right now. Just like I said, it's an epic, epic slide from from being ten and one to where they are now, winning one game. This is absolutely atrocious. I understand that, but but come on, man. This is this is this is the worst breakdown I've ever seen in my life. But we saw a team it coming. Like I, yeah, we did see it coming. I didn't want to hear it. And I didn't want to listen to it. But I mean, after every show, when I go into this, when I go into game day, I know the pregame show. I'm gonna come in, and everything is fine, you know, because I, I I give them a, a blank sheet of paper. I tell them what they need to do and then what they don't need to do, how they can win the game. But then at the end of the game. I got to tell the truth. The truth is this team did not belong in the playoff. This team was not ready to be in the playoff. This team right now played the worst football I've ever seen in the past seven weeks. The worst I've ever seen. I mean, look, this is one of the most embarrassing postseason defeats in history. Absolutely. It's the second worst as far as points. They lost by 24 to the Cowboys in uh, 92. That in Eagles postseason history. Eagles okay. postseason history. Um, but to be where they were a month and a half ago and to see this kind of product, this team was not prepared to play football. No, tonight. not at all. I mean, Tampa's, look, they're a gritty team. They're, they're well coached. They blitz. We know that. Um, the Eagles were a better team on paper. They were unprepared. It was, I don't, I don't even know, was it a 16 to 3 before the second quarter was half over? I mean, this game was over in the middle of the second quarter. And that's a team that's going out there not prepared. And then they, you know, they, they try to come back and they try to make a bunch of plays and it's too late. Um, that's the biggest concern I have yeah. is this is a team that's coming out in a playoff game, the biggest game of their year, and not even prepared to play. When you think back to week three, we dominated the football game against Tampa Bay. Dominated. 471 yards, 171 yards. Dominated the football game, win the game 25-11. To see this turnaround in this period of time to 32-9, We've got to really start looking at. We're, we, we, you know, we're all historians. We've seen what was what's happened over the last two months of the season. Who are the pioneers going to be? That, that's that's the question we now need to ask. Where do we go forward? We know we could talk about these issues all night. Quarterback played poorly. Defense defense has been tackling poorly for six or seven weeks right now. We can't read a blitz to this day. Everyone in the country is talking about the Eagles' inability to pick up the blitz. In front of a national TV audience, once again, we showed we still can't pick up the blitz. The quarterback exactly can't read it. The wide receivers can't, you can't, can't adjust to it. Offensive line can't adjust to it. The coaching staff has to be really, really highly evaluated. There's got to be, there's got to be change. I don't think I'm going to stick with Nick, uh, but I think there's got to be a lot. Because I'm not saying no. I just want to know because why. Because it's 34 and 18. The full body work. This has been a, 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 an epic, you know, downfall. But you have to look at the full body work, and I think he's done a really good job. It's hard to win in this league. 34 and 18 now. Three playoff visits, a Super Bowl visit. I think he deserves more. But the coaching staff has got to be revamped. They, they were, we don't have enough time. We got an hour and a half tonight. I, 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 honestly, the staff. only assistants I would keep are Stoutland, if he wants to come back. And Michael Clay, 
who I wanted to fire last Special year. Special teams no. coach. I, everybody else can go as far as I'm concerned. Not one player on this team got better during the season. Everybody regressed either from the beginning of the season or from last year. That reflects so poorly on the assistant coaches, the staff, and Nick as well. Yeah, and remember what Jeffrey Lurie says, and he came off the field. The game wasn't even over when he left the field. When it's 32-9, to nine, uh, and there he is with his son Julian on the right. There's Don Smolensky, the team president, behind him, and they're walking off the field. And you know if Jeffrey Lurie dismissed Doug Peterson saying he really didn't deserve to be fired, what the heck's going to happen to Nick Sirianni? He has a decision to make, a very important decision to make. Either he's going to decide to keep Nick Sirianni, as Jaws said. You know what? The guy started out like gangbusters, took him to a Super Bowl, and they were 10-1 and one before this collapse. Or, you know what? Maybe this is closer to the real deal. Maybe this is closer to the guy uh, who, who really is. Well, oh, good, good. No, no, no. no, no. See, and, and, and also take a look at how you're going to build this, re rebuild this football ball team. All these crazy analytics and all this stuff, passing game. We've said it for 17 weeks in a playoff game now. Where is the physical nature of this team? Yep. Where, where can they dominate in the trenches? This is Philadelphia. We love defense. Smash rounds, hit people, knock people out. We lead the league in, in tackling, in missed tackles. Offensively, we have one of the league's best offensive line. We ran for two yards and nine yards, first down. We ran, we passed the ball next three times, punt. You know, you know. Where, is, where is the leadership saying, damn it, we're going to run the football. We're going to run. I don't care if they stop us six straight times. The seventh, eighth, and ninth, they're going to go for 20 yard and gash the defense. We just abandon a game plan. This is Philadelphia. There's a certain profile we have to have. Not the analytical, fancy, you know, throw it down the field. And I know we have good receivers. I know we got a solid quarterback. But football is still a physical, violent game. And Barrett is the best example of that. He opens every show talking about it. If we don't hit him in the mouth, we're going to lose. And it's, that's, it, it's not that simple, but that's where it starts. The, when you look at this defense, I mean, there might be five guys, maybe five guys you want to keep. And that's the scary thing. There's so much work to do here. We saw Howie outside the locker room. I mean, all these Shaq Leonard's and Roby's and Byard's and, and Zach Cunningham. I mean, all these guys have to go. Um, Bradbury obviously has to go. He can't play anymore. I mean, what a what a collapse from last year with him. He kind of symbolic of the whole team's yep. collapse. Yep. I mean, that one, the missed tackles with him are just unbelievable. And uh, I mean, who knows Slay? I mean, uh, I mean, who, what young players do they have on deep? I mean, you got Nakobe. You, you got you know. I mean, you got Eli Ricks and and Kelly Keeley Ringo, who I would like to see more. Those incredible stats. There's just not. Right. There's just where are the young players who are going to replace whether Fletch and BG leave. You know, I mean. The, well, all these veteran guys who aren't going to be here. But Ruben, saying that, do you think Mr. Lurie and Howie Roseman are going to take the blame for this? Because you could tell with the way they went into this, Howie they were Rose. all in on it. Oh, they Howie were all Rose. in. They tried to. Howie's accountable. If, they, yeah, Howie if there was a mistake, Rose. they're both yeah. accountable. Exactly. Well, see, I'm just saying this, though. If you, if, as they push forward, yeah. they tried to bring everybody they can bring in to help this team. Byard, they brought in Shaq Leonard, they brought in uh, Cunningham. Roby. They tried to bring in Roby. Roby. Yeah. They tried to bring in everybody to try to patch the holes of this ship. So if they're trying to patch the holes of this ship and it's still sinking, who's going to take the blame for that? Well, I understand all three I coordinators think... are gone. I know all three coordinators are gone. I know that for a no fact. No team's ever fired three coordinators at once. Well, they're going to do it this year. I mean, we, but, we, I mean, we, can look, we, we need pioneers. We need pioneers. Get, we need pioneers to change this ship right now. Younger mm -hmm. and faster on defense. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. I mean, that's, just, right, that's where you start. J just to set the record straight with regard to Nick Sirianni's record, he is 36 and 20 in three seasons coached. He's 34 and 17 in the regular season. He is 2 and 3 in the playoffs, 36 and 20 total. The 34 and 17 mark, and Ruben, you can attest to this. They were 31 and 12 before that six game skid, not including tonight's loss. They were 31 and 12. And at that time, he was number one for wins and winning percent, uh, percentage among all active coaches going back to 2021. So I'm thinking again, no, going, back, I, going I mean, back to, to the year everybody. he was. Uh, yeah. To Every active coach, in, he had the best record. In the record. NFL, he had the best record. And I'll pose the same question as I posed a couple of weeks ago. Do you think that that is his ilk? Do you think I he's think among he, the best coaches to ever coach? I think you have to put yourself in Jeff Lurie's position, and he's not one to make rash decisions. Doug Peterson was fired three years after the Super Bowl, coming off a four, what, four eleven and one right. season. Um, this team isn't there yet. I think I think he'll give him one right, more it's year. It's worse. What do you mean? What are you talking well, about? Well, I mean, it's because this is 
Michael, it's an unforgiving lead. For, I mean, that team an gave up. Lead. That team quit just like this team, but they did it over a full season. I mean, they were still an 11-win team, and Jeff Lurie's going to look at that, and I think, I'm guessing, it's not, I'm not saying it's what I would do, but knowing Jeff for 25 years, he'll look at it and say, you know what? It was, I mean, hell, he gave Andy Reid 2012 after they were 4-8 and eight in 2011 you and won some games at the end of the year. He kept Chip Kelly after the <laughs> you know, meltdown in 2014. And he, and, and he let Chip Kelly go with a game to play, which says a lot about what he'll do. I, I'd rather have the four-win season than no, this season. Wouldn't. Yeah, you know why? Because the four-win season, he gets buried. This is epic. This is his story. Sure it is. It is. We will, I'm just, the NFL I'm just telling will remember you, this. My guess is Terrible. that Jeff Lurie, he'll, he'll look at this and he'll say, you know what? I'm going to give him one more year. I'm going to give him a year, like Josh said, to fix it. We've seen him win games. We've seen him get to a Super Bowl. We've seen him win a lot of games over three well, years. A lot of games. And It's I, hard to get to the Super Bowl. And I, it's I, hard. He, he got, I, just, he got, I, I, I just think, Mike, it's, it's too early. It, it's, it's been epic. All, we can throw it all the buzzers. I agree with you. But I, I don't think it's fi it's a fireable offense the way this team folded their tent down. But only thing, I still think. You're right, but only now, thing. If it happens it's an unforgiving next league, year, he gets like six weeks. But. This is an unforgiving league, and it's always, what have you done for me lately? We know, I mean, as players, you know that. What have you done for me lately? The product you put on the field is the product which you're judged for. It's the product that you go out and get a contract for. The product we saw the last seven games Not there. Is, 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 is burning to my head right now. i got to go through the whole offseason thinking about, all right, who's going to be, who's not going to be here. This will be very interesting because i got to look at college film. i got to look at the rest of the NFL <laughs> film, who the free agents is going to come in. There are a lot of guys on the second half of my roster. I'm like, oh, who do they keep? I mean, Fletcher Cox, you know, uh, BG. I mean, there's a lot of guys on this roster that won't be here next year. And not saying those guys won't be there. But they because they should be there because they played at an all-time level. Those guys came to play. That's the that's the they most, took, most damn pay, thing. They took yeah. pay cuts to stay in this team. Exactly. And they played better than the high-priced. The young guys. Exactly. Young guys. Yeah. Davis. That, may, that makes the offseason even more difficult. Yeah, because exactly. Really, BG was probably their most effective pass rusher on the outside. Yes. And he was playing no Fletcher was their best. He was. Fletcher was their best D-line in all year. Exactly. Kelsey's the best center in the league. Best offensive lineman. And you got to figure out how you're going to move forward. And that, That's going to be tough. But if you're yeah. looking at Andy Reid dismissed by Jeffrey Lurie after all he did for this team, you're looking at Doug Peterson. Well, made the same number of Super Bowls as, as Nick. Oh, that's all well and good. But maybe if they hung on to him, they would have been to this, uh, uh, got the Super Bowl. I think Bowl we all knew that it was time for Andy Reid. Andy it was time. Okay. Andy knew it. We knew it. Fine. Knew so it. he dismisses Andy. He dismisses Doug Peterson, saying he really shouldn't have been fired. Three years after. So the here's Super my Bowl. question: Is Nick Sirianni? Forget about the record. And Doug so said he is needed Nick a year Sirianni off. Is Nick Sirianni the guy to write this ship? That's the question. My you answer to, to you is that Jeff Lurie. I'm guessing Jeff Lurie will say yes. Mm -hmm. Well, they're gonna be. I mean, there are gonna be some meetings. You know, that Jeff Lurie has. The, you know, Mr. Lurie, I call him Mr. Lurie because he gave me my first opportunity in the league. I was his first offensive lineman he drafted. But Mr. Lurie has also take to account what the message is in that locker room, what these guys are saying, what is he going to get? If he sits down and asks these guys, you know, the four pillar guys, hey, does Nick Sirianni's message still uh, illuminate yeah. the, the locker room? I mean, is it still bright in the question. locker room? Does it still work? You does know, or is it, you know what I'm saying? In the locker room. Or does it, you know, has it become old? Has it become stale? Those are all questions he has to ask. And the only way he can do that is asking the players on the team. Can he get those guys fired up? You know what I mean? That's that's a question we have to ask also. And that's a big question. And, yes. that, and that is what it has to be answered because you can see over these last two months, that would have been a negative. Yeah. This team was ill-prepared. It was Nick, Nick Sirianni. He's the leader. you got to give him the blame when it's not going right and the credit when they're doing well. But this coaching staff was abysmal. Yeah. It was abysmal you're, you're right. down the stretch. But I mean, here's we, another we, question. We were out-coached. Here's another question. Literally every game. And, and people are going to bring this up, and I'm going to bring it up. Would you rather have Mike Vrabel? Would you rather have Jim Harbaugh? Would you rather have, dare I say, Bill Belichick? Because those guys are all out there. Is Nick Sirianni the guy over Belichick, Vrabel, and Harbaugh? <laughs> Nick is who I know right now. So, I, I mean, I, 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 I like Nick. I mean. No, I, I, like I, I saw Jim Harbaugh He's win a good. national championship twice with two different teams and also win, uh, almost win a Super Bowl loss to his brother. And he develops quarterbacks pretty well. That guy named Andrew Luck, who he had at Stanford, did pretty well when he went to Indianapolis. He didn't couldn't he? play. He was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> are you kidding me? But, but those are decisions that are out there. And if you're Jeffrey Lurie and you're Howie Roseman, you've got to be thinking about them. You've got to be thinking about your quarterback, who you just gave a $250 million Ooh, contract to. And whether or not this guy, is, is he the guy... To, uh, and 
I don't know if the I answer still love is him. no. I mean, I, I still st- love him. I still love him too. But is you he got, the guy to lead this team and lead this you offense? You have no Good choice. Question. You have no, no choice there. You have no choice there. But what's his signing bonus? One thing about this league is about performance. Yeah. And I love Jalen Hurts, but he did not perform this year up to his capabilities. Uh, he and, didn't. And, and, and there's no and question again, about the it. The safety was and uncomfortable. The biggest, the biggest play in today's game was that safety. Uncomfortable. And you, you can't ha- do that. You can't do that. Nope. And that, that, that was that stemmed the whole time. Coaches slide. don't have dead money in their contracts. They don't have salary caps. So that's why Alex Tanney could be gone. Brian Johnson could be gone. All the offensive coaches probably should be gone. Every one of them except Stout. And you just try to get some coaches. We saw the difference coordinators can make when you go from Gannon and Steichen to Desai, Patricia, and, uh, and Brian Johnson. I mean, it can make a huge difference. And there'll be new coordinators here next year, and they better be guys that can do these things. Get right, Jalen prepared. Right, right. Teach him how to deal with the blitz. Can you get Jalen prepared? Can you? Can I believe you get, so. Really? Look at the way because he played that, last that year. safety, I thought, no. Yeah, the safety no was way. terrible. He's this is a guy who safety. played in the Super Bowl and had a historic performance at 24 years old. Mm-hmm. 24 <laughs> years old. Yeah, that didn't. It's, that happened, Michael. But I, I know it also happened that he fumbled the that's ball. That's why you got a key it. Time in the, it was yeah. first half, but that's it, but it why cost you got to get him a coach who can get them. We've seen what this kid is capable of doing. He's capable of playing at an extreme high level and doing it over a long period of weeks. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Ruben. So now they got to get a coach in there who can get that out of him. Again. Well, play call. That's a, I mean, that's a big because thing. he's not going yeah. anywhere. Well, you know that's a big thing though, because you know the play we're talking about when he took the safety. It's third and seven. Money. It's third and seven. So third and seven, we're looking like we, we're, we're third and 21. I mean, they're running deep routes. They're running corner routes. They're running nine routes. They're running routes that slowly develop. You can't run slowly developing plays when you have a blitz coming, an all-out blitz coming, and, you know, and, and, and think that it's going to be okay. I've been talking to Jaws and I've been screaming this stuff for the, for the past seven weeks. When yeah. they blitz you, when somebody disappears, all you got to do is turn around and hit that vacated spot. Turn around and make yourself available. But at that point, Running I don't think field. he's been I – don't, I don't think Jalen's, number one, been coached to all right then. As soon as you see the blitz, throw it. Or as soon as you see the blitz, guys breaking routes off. Those type of things weren't coached because I didn't see it on the field. You are a product of what you do in practice, and evidently they didn't show that in practice because they well, didn't perform we, that we, we saw exactly, if you read the blitz, how you can get a big play. Baker Mayfield in, in the game. Too. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a zero coverage blitz. He, he throws a lollipop down the middle of the field. Touchdown. You look great. You have to get, by the way, he's a $5 million quarterback. We got a $250 million quarterback. Yeah. It's easy to eat Absolutely. up a lot of salary cap money. But here's where we are correct, Barrett. Coaching. Yeah. Baker Mayfield is getting coached right now. They have a well-designed offense. This kid, Canales, is their mm-hmm. new offense yeah, quarterback. They're from Seattle. Yeah, from Seattle. Yep, Seattle. Right, you can see that the way they run it off, it is a well-designed offense. And Baker Mayfield, he knows where to go to every single step. We, 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 he you threw, know, it he didn't threw, He threw over 4,000 yards this year, more than Jalen Hurts. Yep. He threw 10 interceptions, Jalen threw 15. He also Career, put up, and, uh, Baker Mayfield stinks. He, he also no, put he's up been nine points properly. against the Panthers and and 30 against the Eagles because the, the safety wasn't his. 30 against the Eagles. I mean, this is a guy who put up nine points against the worst team in football last week. So I don't want to get carried away with how great Baker. He played fine. He did what he had to do. Tonight? But he did it against the worst defense well, I've I ever seen played, in my life. I think he did better than five. And I think the worst any defense. quarterback that you threw out there could have done what Baker Mayfield did tonight because mm-hmm. this defense, Drew, you, well, they, they, they didn't point, tackle anybody. Well, they didn't, that point, they didn't cover Locked anybody. In. You could have thrown for 400 <laughs> yards. And I'm not, not taking up, anything away from this Warm up, baby. Drew Field was fine. 251 million, you got me. Yeah. But Remember, Drew any Locked quarterback. In. Any quarterback could have done because we've seen it. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've seen it. Tyrod Ty Ty did, did it. Drew Locke did it. Yeah. Kyle Murray did it. These aren't Hall of Famers here. And Baker Murphy is a great story. He had a really good year. Fourth team, former first uh, number one pick. Mm-hmm. Right. Any quarterback in the league would have torn this defense apart because if you can't tackle, doesn't mean it doesn't matter who's throwing the ball. You know, and it was, was James was, Bradbury's out there like waving it, guys. <laughs> I mean, it, what the is tackling that? was the worst, but I sat back and I said, you know what? Watch this. We ran the ball two times in a row to start the game, got a first down, and then we ran it one more time in the first quarter. And I told Mohorn, our producer, hey, man, I bet you, I bet you they don't, they, they don't get an, another run by Swift until the end of the second quarter. And I'll be damned if I wasn't right because he didn't get it until five minutes into the second quarter. He had Again. 10 carries for 34 yards, 3.4 yards per carry, had a long of 17 yards. We're obviously waiting for Nick Sirianni. I don't know what he can say. This is going to be a brutal news conference. His team 
His, his team forsake him, forsook him. And, and uh, what can he say after a loss like this? The same with Jalen Hurts. What can he say? Jason Kelsey, did he just play his last game? The same with Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox, wow. around, Lane Johnson. Hope Those not. are the core four we talked about in the pregame program. They are the nucleus of this Eagles team. They have been pro bowlers. They have been all pros. Jason Kelsey making his sixth all pro team this season uh it, it, it's just a brutal way to end a career if indeed that is the case let's go to one of those core four right now lane johnson in the locker room last six games whatever um it's been a slot for sure so uh disappointing um you know but looking forward i mean uh, i'm excited about where this team's gonna be next year uh you know, and I plan on finishing my, my, my career strong. I think I have a few good years left, and, uh, you know, I'm going to take it to the limit. Why do you think some of those issues weren't able to be corrected this year? I don't know. It's like we weren't trying. Um, we give credit to Todd Bowles and them. I mean, they did a, did a lot of shit defensively, uh, you know, as far as um, different blitz packages, uh, trying to confuse us. So they did, they did a good job with that, and I felt like, you know, we had some plays, we had, we, and we had times where we could have taken over the game, and we didn't. And so, um, you know, that's the way it ends. There's always change every year, Lane, but um, Jason has obviously thought about his future quite a bit recently. Uh, if that was his last game, how much we miss him, and what did he mean to you? I, mean, I love him. He's one of my brothers. I mean, I never had, um, you know, um, a brother, you know, growing up as an only child. So um, these guys are my family. So I love him. Um, you know, he's one of the best centers I've played a game. There's few guys that could, uh, um, you know, do things he could do in a football field athletically. Um, you know, and I don't think we'll see another one like him for a long time. So, did he give any indication that this could be the last? Uh, he's hinted at it, but um, you know, I think it's going to be him. It's going to have to make that call. Um, but I mean, I was playing like it was his last. I mean, you, you never know. But uh, you know, you're going to have to ask him that. Well. Um, the blitz, obviously, you guys knew it was coming. Yeah. Um, and, and they're still effective again. Yeah, I mean, like I said, what, we, what was the plan? What was the plan to stop the blitz? Yeah, I mean, um, we, we tried to be thorough with what we were doing, but um, I feel like there's some times where we did beat it, and then there was times where, you know, you need some third down conversions to uh, take over the game, like I said, and we didn't do it. And so, um, you know, when the defense had a few good stops, there, there was there was times where the offense had a chance to take control, go make a drive, and we, we failed to do that. And so it's frustrating. Um, you know, this whole second half of the season was frustrating. But you know, looking at it, um, we analyze it, have a lot of time in the offseason to reflect about it, and you know, make sure nothing like this happens again. In these past ten years, we Lane Johnson, eyes rimmed red, talking to the media around his. Uh, his locker, he was asked about Jason Kelsey, and, and uh, the response was as heavy as you can get in a post-game situation. He said, I love him. He's one of my brothers. I never had a brother. I was an only child. These guys are my family. I love him. I don't think we'll see another one like him for a long time. It was beautifully put, and that's, it, that's the sadness of having to move on. Well, you, you'd still be playing if you could. You'd still be no playing question. if you could. No Unfortunately, you've got to move on with your lives and sit with sad sacks like us. But the, thank goodness for that, by the I'm way. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know what? It's hard to imagine this franchise and, and this, this city, this community, without Jason Kelsey. I mean, Absolutely. he's been such a... I mean, he's one of the... You know, we talk about Reggie White and Chuck Bednarik and Steve Van Buren. Yep. I mean, he's as good as any player that's ever worn an Eagles jersey. And it's just hard to imagine him not being here.